My name's Rob Nixon, 47 year old Kiwi, been living in Australia, moved my family over, family of four at the time, uh, in 2002. Recently I've lost uh, two of my children to suicide. I first lost my daughter Aria in 2010 to suicide and then my son Joshua Nixon on Anzac Day 2016. This is his story. This is Josh's story. Yeah, on the uh, on 17th of April 2016, my son Josh, he up and uh, asked me to come and pick him up to report because he didn't want to go. I went out to Molong where he was living and walked in and seen him and he said to me, he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm, I'm here to pick you up, come to see you. He said, I don't want to go and report. I said, why not? No, I just want the police to come and get me. And locked me up and he, he just broke down in tears and started bawling his eyes out and telling me all these things he's been doing. And that he just wanted to be alone, left alone, uh, locked up in a cell. And I said to him, why, why do you have to be, have the police involved? Why can't we... Uh, why don't you do a voluntary rehab stint and have a bit of a rest that way? He calmed down and agreed. I said, okay, well, get in the car. I'll take you to Orange and report, and um, let's go and talk about it. And so after we reported down at the Orange Police Station, must have been probably close to 8 o'clock at night, we drove down to the hospital here. And I drove him through past. We entered in at the main entrance here of the Orange Base Hospital drove past into the Bloom, Bloomfield uh, facilities with the thought that somehow, some, by some miracle, that they'll be open. Um, we drove and done a lap and it was pretty obvious that it was all out of ours. And so we just did a lap, looked around at everything and we parked here in this car park here <coughs> for about an hour, maybe longer discussing what we need to do, what Josh needs to do to get his life back on track. And um, he agreed that he, he needed a lot of help here. You know, he was doing ice, he was doing all sorts of things, terrible things. He was beating up on his missus, scaring his children, beating up his house, his car. He's having all sorts of dramas and um, so we sat here and talked about it and the outcome of that conversation that night was he had caught the next morning, he's going to submit himself, admit himself into Bloomfield somewhere here to have a rest and to get himself and his life back on track. So the next day Josh and I, I picked him up early in the morning. We went down to the Orange Court, the courthouse. His lawyer, Justine Ringbow, had just finished dealing with his, with his matter. It was adjourned again, which irritated the crap out of Josh because he'd been trying to get this case all sorted out right from the word go. But anyway, um, following court, we drove down here again, did the same lap, stopped at the admin building we entered in there and some woman, I, I don't know her name, um, she was the drug and alcohol person. I told her that, you know, here's my son. He had his bags packed, ready to, ready to face up to whatever he needed to do to get his life back on, on track. Told her that he was, uh, he was on drugs. She asked what was his drug of choice and he said um, ice. Um, that he was suicidal, that he was having um, a lot of problems at home, dealing with all the stuff that he's going through. Um, he was depressed following the, the suicide in 2010 of his sister Aria. And I will, she run the, the detox um, department here. And the woman told her that he needs to be assessed and that she will call, call us, 
um, to have that assessment done. Um, she said, we'll call us about half an hour or whatever it was. So we drove away, went and had some lunch, waiting for this phone call. The, the, phone, the phone rang and received this call from this woman. She rang me because Josh didn't have a phone, he didn't have any ID, he didn't have anything. He's, you know, fairly well into these bloody eyes. And she was pretty rude, you know, for a p person involved in the, the mental health industry. She, she just basically, she didn't introduce herself, she just said, is Josh there? And I said, yep, hang on. And she proceeded to talk to Josh, asked him three or four simple questions. Uh, your name, your date of birth, where do you live, your drug of choice. And then she proceeded to tell him that we don't have any intakes, we can't do an intake. Uh, until Tuesday, which was follow after the long weekend. And I strongly feel that the decision was based on their resources um, yeah, after the long weekend. And it was, uh, well, yeah, Josh didn't make it to Tuesday, did he? he um, himself on Anzac Day the Monday night. And, uh, I said, you wait for me, son. I'll be there. I'll be there for you. I get a phone call from my wife. To hear that he had, he had hung himself. And he was gone. The next time that I brought my son back to this hospital, this facility that's supposed to help people that was a, he was in the back. He was in, he was in the casket. And, you know, that was quite a, a spiritual moment for us. You know, take a look at this place. They got a, we were told at the time that they got a brand new rehab centre just opened two weeks prior to our visit. Two weeks, only two weeks old. And, um, you know, she, she didn't say that they were full. She said that they didn't have an intake until Tuesday. Well, my son didn't make it to Tuesday. He um, took his own life. Um, he hung himself in his home, alone. Monday evening, and uh, yeah, you know, I still haven't had a follow-up by the hospital, where is your son? They sent me a text message saying that he needs $130. This is how they treat people that are having problems. Uh, you know, this, this drug ice just overta overtakes their life. As they know, they know the statistics, and you know, nobody, I haven't had anyone. We come in here, they said that we're going to do this intake and even today I haven't had a phone call from the hospital, where's your son, how is he going? There doesn't seem to be uh, any duty of care, for any heart, anything. I, I don't understand. I don't understand. None at all. But my goal and the purpose of, of this video and the things that I'm the journey I'm about to embark on is to see if we can change change the system because the system has let my, my family down, it's let me down, let my son down, his three children. 
this whole family let us down and if we can make enough noise and change the system we possibly could save another life uh, because things have to change this, this cannot go on they call this the health system um, I'm afraid um, it's just not good enough and uh, yeah I won't rest until um, we're trying to make some meaning out of losing not only my son but also my daughter you know, parents would have to go through losing any kids and here I am we've lost a second child 